get started with the hay. Lost a creek and well, let's just start it in the hay. With his long johns on, pop wet, I'm creeping up to the bottom to the hay. Hey there, you're listening to 88.3 WXOU from Oakland University in Auburn Hills. My name is Logan Pizzurro, and joining me today is a very special guest with their songs recently going viral on TikTok and also releasing their latest single, Life. We have the lead guitarist and vocalist for the band Mother Mother, Ryan Goldemund. So thank hey. you so much for joining me today. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, now, you recently released a new single called Life, and also earlier this year, your album Inside. And uh, we will get to that, but I thought it would be kind of a good idea to kind of talk about the history of uh, Mother Mother and kind of how it led up to this point. Uh, so what is kind of the, the birth story of your band? I think the birth story really was um, me becoming uh, disenchanted with learning a more cerebral style of music that being jazz um that being the academic approach i was in college studying jazz guitar like practicing all day music theory and one day in a practice module you know i never really fancied myself a singer never thought i would write singing songs but one just kind of fell from the sky and it was cute and quaint and simple and it just filled me with a feeling that uh, I hadn't felt before in music. And so, yeah, the road forked kind of in that moment. And I sort of left all that heady stuff behind and, and went after writing songs and singing songs, which is totally new and unexpected. And I was living with my sister, Molly. She was going to art school. Um, she was never a musician per se. We had never sang together. But she has such a cool speaking voice that I knew if she would just, you know, say, you know, speak to a tone over top of these songs that I was writing, that it would sound cool. And so I kind of convinced her to do that. And we went and did some open mics. And this thing just kind of was born really quickly. And it got up and running. And it was like within weeks, we we're like, whoa, what, what just happened? <laughs> like band we're playing and we're singing and this is just bizarre so that's kind of how it began yeah that's that's such a great story and uh why why was the name mother mother chosen and were there any other uh proposed names at the time um there wasn't any other names on the chopping block um i had a friend who just wouldn't shut up about mother mother singular being the best band name in the world and he kind of got in my head and um we did an open mic and we didn't have a name and we got off stage and this guy said what's what's your band's name and so i just thought of my friend who, who kept touting that band name i said we're mother he's like cool and uh so i guess i was like i guess we're mother now um and then we signed a deal maybe six months in and then they urged us to change our name because there were so many other bands called Mother. Mm. They were like, okay, well, is Mother Mother taken? <laughs> they're like, nope. I'm like, cool. All right, we'll be Mother Mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, such a good name. You had to use it twice. <laughs> so it's, it's like, you know, your name just becomes part of your DNA. You can't imagine not uh, being, being belonged to it. Um, but when you try to like be objective, it's kind of like, that's kind of a weird name. I don't know. Like it's like bands like Pearl Jam. It's like, it's so ubiquitous that it's like, oh, that's just, that's a great, um, classic band name, but it's like, no, it's not. It, it's only so because they made it so through their staying power and their success. But when you think about it objectively, it's like, oh, that's kind of a strange pairing of words. Yeah. Uh, and you guys have just an amazing uh, repertoire of songs like Ghosting, uh, Verbatim, and now Life. Uh, and I'm curious of what are some of your personal favorite songs from Mother Mother? Um, I, I really like that first one that I wrote in the practice module that kind of started the whole thing. That was a song called Ball Cap. To, to this day, it's one of my favorite Mother Mother songs. It's on our very first album, Touch Up. And I really like the new one, Life. That was, you know, Again, just another moment where like a song will just appear and it will just change the energy in the room and, and change the energy in your life. 
and it's easy and it's it feels like it comes from another place i love those moments in songwriting uh, they happen every now and again it's not always the case i guess if it was always the case it wouldn't be special um, but life was written in that kind of way and uh so you are the primary songwriter for the band um and a couple of your songs seem to have or seem to feel just a lot more personal. Uh, so I was wondering if songwriting is sort of a coping mechanism for you. I think it is without really um, being aware of that or, or trying to position it as that. You know, I, I just gravitate towards the creative process because it feels good. And then I get lost in it, and then I come out the other side going, oh, I, I feel better now. Oh, I feel less distraught. Um, but it's, it's, it's not the same as like, okay, I'm making an appointment with a therapist, and I'm going over my problems that I'm going to present. It's not as strategized, you know. I think you don't really want to like tell music what it's supposed to do to you too much. You just mm -hmm. kind of want to let that creative process be really abstract, really free, and just fall into it and let what happens happen. And if you create less boundaries, then yes, I think more healing and coping and medicinal outcomes occur. Yeah, definitely. And I, I have to compliment you, your songwriting, just uh, for examples like uh, Burning Pile and Ghosting, when you kind of use chords that are like slightly out of the main key, like going from F major to E major in the main chorus of Burning Pile. Um, it, it really gives the song just like kind of a unnatural feel, but it still really works. And I just really love that style. Thanks. Yeah, me too. I think it's all about finding those quirky chords and then a melody that can tie them together. Mm -hmm. I think things become more catchy and more accessible when you can implement the strange um, in a melodic way. Yeah, definitely. And uh, now a few of your songs, uh, most notably Hayloft, have blown up recently on TikTok. And uh, how has this kind of impacted your uh, band? <laughs> uh, drastically. Um, yeah, it's given us a new lease on life, you could say. It's opened up the, the doors to the world, you know, before this, you know, we were kind of just a band in, that did well in Canada. And now we have all these new fans around the world and these tours that are robust coming down the pike. And this is 15 years in, so you can imagine that it's just sort of like, what? Wild. How? Huh? TikTok? <laughs> us <laughs> there's a lot of that going on and then you're like wow life is weird um the music industry is weird uh and we're lucky that's kind of the the summary the summarizing feeling yeah did you guys even really know what tiktok was prior to this or was it just kind of just a random news flash out of the blue i mean i guess tiktok is fairly new mm -hmm. but it's fairly uh, ubiquitous. So you, you hear about it and then you connote it to some toxic social media thing, like some amphetamine app mm -hmm. that you know, kids are addicted to. That, that, that was just sort of like, I guess, that the media kind of portrayal. Um, so I never really thought anything. I was just like, that's not for me. And then it changed, it blew up, and, and then we kind of were exposed through it. And so at that point, I took it as an opportunity to kind of like understand more what was going on there and sign up for the app and start an account and get to know the community within TikTok. And like anything, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad, and you just need to kind of like pick your people and be mindful of your your information diet you know it's like it's pretty powerful when you sort of choose to to look and take in positive things and and alternatively it's very powerful when you get sucked into taking in negative things 
And what's kind of neat about TikTok is that it has it all. It's a smorgasbord of everything. But, you know, be, be wary when you enter the, the wilderness that is TikTok. Yeah, I definitely agree when you say that TikTok has everything. It, it really seems like it really does. And when you think you've run out of things to see that's new, it's you get like 20 more things. It's, it's really interesting. It's very, it's very fascinating. Um, I, you know, I think it's really good not to go on TikTok, like, you know, with some restraint, mm -hmm. you know, like, because it sucks you in. The whole app is built to, like, make you stay. Um, so, yeah, I think in the band, we try to, like, okay, let's go on to do our work and to connect and to, like, you know, celebrate this community. But, okay, let's also be careful not to stay there too long so we can get back to making music and get back to, like, living your life and mm -hmm. breathing the air and uh, smelling the roses, as it were. Yeah, and how have the kind of general plans of the band changed uh, since this uh, new exposure? You know, the fundamental plans haven't changed because we still just do what we do. We write music, we record music, and then we share it. That formula is still in place. Um, but the extent to which other people are participating in that formula has changed. There's just, there's just more people and there's more geography, but really we're not doing anything different. And we're lucky that we have been doing this formula, um, you know, repetitively for the last so many years because this happened to us and it was like, oh, we just, if we just keep doing what we're doing, then we can, we can greet this energy um, efficiently, effectively. It, it's, it's not going to overwhelm us if we just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, with your recent uh, album, Inside, being released during the pandemic, and I, I think the uh, title has a little bit of a clue of what I'm about to say, uh, but uh, how has the pandemic uh, impacted your songwriting? Well, that, that, that uh, album was certainly... Der derivative of that pandemic moment. The title is, is absolutely uh, an homage to the insular nature uh, to which the world was uh, existing. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of what you do, right? In songwriting, it's like you take your circumstances and your situation and you find the areas of potency and then you you try to filter that through your creative process. And, you know, the pandemic was so like unignorable. Mm -hmm. It was like, what else could you write about? It's like, I can't write about, you know, things that are detached, like just like, it can't be like a romance album or like, it can't be nonsensical songs. That's just like sheer poetry, or at least it didn't feel like that was appropriate. It just sort of felt like, wow, we're like in the womb of this crisis. You gotta write through it. Mm -hmm. It was directly uh, collaborative. The the the, rec the album was a collaboration with this world event. Yeah, and uh, kind of comparing the Inside album to uh, previous albums such as like Oh My Heart, um, the sound, the general sound of Mother Mother has kind of changed a little bit with uh, a few more synthesizer parts, um, kind of before being used kind of to complement it, but now full on embracing. Um, the synthesizer and more kind of digital aspects. Uh, and with your older songs gaining a lot more popularity, has there been any pressure to write, go back to this older style? Not pressure, but definitely it's a good reminder that less is more and um, it's allowed us to reconnect to those roots and, and yeah, just remember like, oh, that's, we like that. You know, th that sort of stripped down, organic, spacious treatment actually sounds good to our ears and feels good in our hearts. And I think um, it's not pressure. It's like permission. It's like, oh, yeah, we can go back to that. We can we can do that again. And we won't, you know, fall into obscurity or we won't be competitive. Because I think like the... Um, 
the world has changed. The industry has changed. Like production value can be so many different things now in music. Um, it's like the, you know, the muscular, uh, modern production. It's not setting the bar because radio isn't the, you know, the central point for music consumption. It's much more anarchistic than that. It's like streaming is really driving um, listenership. TikTok is basically the mothership. And in these uh, forums, a thing just needs to sound delightful. It just needs to pique the interest. It doesn't need to be loud. It doesn't need to be quiet. It doesn't need to be you know, modern or vintage. It just needs to be good or I think emotional. And, and that has sort of changed the game for artists who are trying to find their sound. There's less pressure to fit into a modality or a genre or a production aesthetic. And I think that's really positive. Yeah. And one thing that I was kind of curious about is, uh, who are some of your, uh, inspirations when you're writing a song um i i mean i don't ever really consciously think about like okay i'm writing a song who do i want to sound like right um they must come through subconsciously like you know the pixies that's all-time favorite band like Elliot Smith, I love that kind of raw vulnerability. Tom Waits, I love that just like wild, like animalistic cork factor that he has going on. Um, you know, Radiohead, so sophisticated, um, but never trying or thinking directly of these people. But, you know, you just try to listen to music and pay respect to your prescribed icons and then forget about them in the, in the writing process, but trust that those spirits are finding their way through you, through, through the guitar, you know, unbeknownst to you. That's the best way I think for influences to take hold. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with that. Um, and for your uh, music video for the song off your most recent album, uh, I Got Love, uh, it's it's a very unique music video with different uh, video submissions from fans. And uh, what kind of uh, inspired you to do this style of video? Um, I guess TikTok did. Like, we went on TikTok and we basically were given, like, this amazing invitation into the private world of the youth of today who were digging mother mother music and it felt like a great privilege like oh like they're letting us into their personal space with the posters on the wall and they're on their bed and they're singing along and it was just so real and like raw and not filtered and human and celebratory of the effect that music has on you when you're just in your normal setting, you know, going into that world with your headphones on. Such a special thing. And um, we just kind of wanted to celebrate that. We didn't want to make a music video that was all flashy and high budget with a set and like catering and all that crap. It was like, no, let's just, that's, that's the shit. Let's, um, Let's have them be the stars because that evokes the most in, in our hearts right now. And this song is all about love in the face of um, hardship. So this just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely. And um, with your latest single, uh, Life, can you kind of give us a little bit of a backstory uh, for that song? Yeah, I mean, that song was was uh, a born out of a day of songwriting struggle with a different song. Um, I was working with an artist named Dylan, 
and I've, I've been producing some of her album and it's super awesome and it's been a, a joy but you know making a record is painful sometimes and it was painful that day we we're just like struggling with the vocal and hours and hours and hours and like pulling out our hair and um at one point i said you know let's just put that down and try something else just for fun just to refresh ourselves just to like restore the creative juice to remind ourselves that music is supposed to be fun so like let's just like make a beat let's just find a cool synth sound and see what happens and we did that and bam that song just kind of appeared and uh it's so mysterious like the last thing we would have thought an hour before when we were in the depths of musical despair was that this great song was gonna sprout like a flower in like 45 minutes from nowhere yeah it was cool <laughs> Uh, and I know you just kind of released an album and a single and are soon going to be on tour, uh, but are there any other plans in place right now that Mother Mother fans can look forward to in the future? Yeah, we got some more music coming out. Um, I don't even know if I'm supposed to, but I, I'll just say we got some more music coming out soon, very soon. All yeah. right. We creative we've been in the studio we've been working on some new stuff like even though we just made a record we feel like we don't need to stop recording new music just because we made a record let's just keep going yeah there's so much life in the project right now so i think we just want to like seize the moment and and uh be creative and make more music and and just be prolific so that's kind of what we're doing all right, and finally, uh, you did do a TED Talk detailing a little bit of your songwriting process, specifically for uh, Until It Doesn't Hurt. And uh, it, it was really interesting to kind of pull back the curtain a little bit, just to kind of see the process. Um, but I wanted to ask, what are some songwriting tips that you would give to any new artists or beginning, beginning artists that are just starting out? Um. I think like make, pursue songs, sounds, words um, that make you feel alive. You know, I think that's the most important thing. Like if your song isn't like, you know, giving you goosebumps, then um, put that one down and chase after that feeling. I, so often it's like you, you write stuff that you wouldn't listen to somehow that happens like i've done that where it's like i wouldn't listen to this mm -hmm. why did i write this i think i wrote it for the sake of trying to write something that worked in this way it's like ooh, no 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 that's that's really not what one should do that's good as an exercise like i'm gonna try to write you know i like a latin pop song as an exercise you know, that's a great thing to do. I don't really like Latin pop music. Um, so I shouldn't try to make a career writing Latin pop music. But as a songwriting exercise, that's a great thing to do. But if you're trying to find your voice and you're trying to find your special thing that the world needs that only you can produce, then it needs to light you up. You need to press play and go, this is my new favorite song, the song that I just wrote. It's making me cry. It's making me dance. Like you, you want to you wanna do to yourself what you intend to do to the listener. And if you're not moving the needle on that deeply emotional uh, way, then I think you need to recalibrate and check in with your intentions and really ask yourself, what am I trying to do? Who am I trying to do this for? What's the meaning of all this? All right. And uh, that kind of wraps up a little interview um so yeah thank you so much ryan for joining me here today you have an awesome day yeah you too <laughs> hey thank you so much for watching this exclusive interview with mother mother here on the wxou youtube channel uh, i had a lot of fun talking to ryan and it was just a great time so i, I was really happy that we were able to put this together uh if you enjoyed this video then be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel we are 
posting more content on here, and also you can give us a little like as well, that would be greatly appreciated. Be sure to stream Mother Mother's latest single, Life, also uh, their latest album, Inside, link in the description, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So, thanks so much, I've been Logan Pizarro, and remember, don't let your dreams fly too far away from you.